Well, he's not taking that much damage. I mean, it is survivor difficulty. And contrary to popular belief, survivor is not meant to be easy. It's never like you don't pick it to be like, oh, I'm just going to. It's not story. Yeah. I was just going to say, you don't pick it to just speed run through the game. And I'm like, okay, that's literally. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the, but you know. Hey guys, this is uh, Ben Kirton from Gunfire Games, principal designer. And um, I'm here with. John Pearl, I'm the uh, narrative director at Gunfire Games. Yeah, we're here to check out this uh, Devs React, or we're here to do a Devs React on uh, Remit 2 Speed Run. Um, this is our second one. We did one for the first one. It was really fun seeing the techniques people use. So let's see Wait, what's what if up. we reacted to Devs reacting to a speed run? That could That'd be, be awesome. Speed. That's a new one. We can talk about how, oh man, we shouldn't have said that, or that was a typo exactly. there. Yeah, it'd be fun. Like, that didn't pan out well. <laughs> <laughs> like, nice joke there. Fell flat. Good job, dude. You work on that for, for whatever. Next one. But yeah, we got uh, we just released our DLC, The Awakened King. And so we thought, what better way uh, than to show people who have mastered the current content uh, before the DLC came out, of course. Um, it should be pretty interesting. So let's see what we got. I think I think they I can't tell if oh, he's OK. He's rolling. He's he's rolling a very specific start. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen a few other speed runs where they roll it first and they don't count it in their their initial uh, run. But do you know what he's looking for here? Is uh, he... well, let's see. It's probably a very specific one because there's probably an item that he needs or a. Well, we'll find out soon. But okay, Narut. Okay, so what's he going for here? It's interesting, and this is probably some some insight for people. <clears throat> we have talked about making it so you can just roll the story that you want because it doesn't really hurt anything. It just saves time, right? So we're looking into the potential of uh, at, at you know for anybody reading this from the future, we may have already done this now, but uh, <laughs> currently, as we react to this, we've talked about adding the ability to just pick the story you want because you can already do that. It's it just takes ex extra time to do it. So you know what I mean. Yeah, so. I think that I think that's a a cool thing for players, especially you know people who who are looking for something so specific. I think that'd yeah. be nice. nice that's, to do. It, it might just be for, well, it might just be for adventure, but even yeah. that is super helpful. Yeah. I mean, obviously the story is meant to be completely random. Um, yeah, but uh, I know people have talked about wanting seeds and all these things, and you know, you never know. It's just it's just one of those things. We have a lot of things on our list that we want to do for players. All right, so let's see what we got here. So we picked Talratha's storyline. I wonder why. You think it's because the boss is easy? Yeah. Easier. I mean, it's, it's easy, a little bit easier than the alternate choice. But I wonder why first, though. What's... That's a good point. I uh, wonder what it is about that. See. Oh, good old Liquid just... Escape. That's the classic, the speedrun classic. Wait, wait, wait. People don't. You, what's up? Is shaking it part of the speed run? I think it is. It probably. It probably. I mean, we've seen the other speed runs. You've seen the Doom, one of the Doom ones, where you use the, you know, the weapon wheel, and it lets you do crazy ass jumps yeah. and warps and stuff. So, hey, games are tricky. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Speeds up the elevator secretly. Is that would. That'd be awesome. That would be pretty good. Well, we did go meta with the Archon, so maybe we have to go meta with some kind of. Um. You know, some kind of like special thing to behind That'd the be scenes. Hard. We're like, just for speedrunners only. It's for the three people that do speedruns. Here you go. All right. So maybe you know this. Why doesn't he have pants? What's what's the advantage of no pants? Um. So, well, you get a lot of ventilation. I mean, he's gonna be going fast. So. <laughs> um. I mean, it might be his weight because he put himself in lightweight, yeah. right? Because he's medium. Yeah. I wonder why he picked the dog. I mean. Obviously, a lot of people know that the dog. Oh, he's not even going to pick up the gear. So he's he's definitely going for a very specific thing. Um, but yeah, the dog will revive you when you're down, which makes sense. But in the speed run, you probably aren't dying intentionally. You know, you you know accident. You you only die intentionally for <laughs> skips or things like that. Oh well, of course the dog runs faster, right? You move faster with the dog. So, and you get swiftness trait. So that does make sense now that I yeah. think about it. It's funny because we've been working on the DLC uh, for a while. And so looking back on some of the stuff we've already created, 
it's sometimes hard to remember every single perk mm-hmm. and, and everything's cool. But yeah, now it makes perfect sense why you'd want swiftness. So he probably set himself light. He's going to get himself some trait points. But where is he going here? So I wonder if he knows exactly what tiles are spawning. Because it is random, right? The game is, yeah. for people that don't know, it's procedurally generated from tile sets that we've created. And the game kind of like glues them together and makes a unique experience every time you play. So yeah. I'm wondering if just rolling this specific one, he kind of has an idea of what's going to spawn. You know what I mean? So he knows, like, right. I can get this. Yeah, done. The mini bosses are random too. So you might, yep. you might get a different one than you're expecting. Exactly. Yeah. And there's four mini bosses, right? So, yeah. I mean, ultimately he's looking for Ta- He was looking for town Rotha, but yeah, you don't know who you're going to get mini boss yep. files. That's true. And it's interesting. It's it's funny because this game is, I wouldn't say as speed run friendly as other games because of the randomness, right? Like, yeah. I mean, even Remnant 1, right? Because it, it was a locked uh, campaign. Yep. It, yep. You get different bosses and different mini bosses, but you knew the order of the worlds. Mm-hmm. And each, each world point. technically had like its own singular story where, you know, this one has two and those playing DLC know that now Lewisham has three. Yep. So, well, that's going to make it even more interesting, right? Like with the addition of new stories, is it going to, how much is it going to change the, the run for you? But yeah. so, so for people that are new to Remnant, Remnant is, you know, a basically a lot of people call it souls with guns. It's, it's a little bit more than that, but Hey, it's a very s- strong way to, to explain the core concept of the game. So it's a challenging game. And instead of mostly melee, you most you use mostly guns. There's lots of ways to make builds and and there's you know classes and dual classes and gun modifiers and all these things. Um, but one of the features that sets it apart from many other games, especially ones in in a Souls like genre, is that there are um, like I mentioned the procedural content. So you'll roll a story, and this one is in Narud, the the kind of space uh, area. And you could get one of two stories. And our DLC that's upcoming is adding a new story to one of the other biomes. So then that biome will then have three stories. So when you roll the campaign, you could, you know, you're getting a, a, a random creation of, of your story each time, like a, a different sequence, I guess. Yeah. And I mean, also too, to mention if, if they don't know, like there's adventure mode, which yeah, you, you basically choose the world and then it picks the story for you. But like yep. you said, in, in the future, it's totally, potential to let players choose which of the stories yeah, yeah. each story has different bosses different items different yeah. events tied to it so you know if you're looking for something in particular it definitely is is a good way to, to kind of clean up your uh, your checklist for items yeah so adventure mode is available once you beat either story from that biome so if you he uh he's in in the road right now and once he beats that well he could beat this story or he could beat the one that has a different world boss at the end he'll unlock adventure mode and he can just keep re-rolling it and even within the story that you've already com- created there's random stuff that you probably didn't see i mean it's a matter of fact there's things that you didn't see the first time through so it is actually worth playing biomes over again and individual stories within those biomes and so that's why we're talking about making it so when you go to adventure you could just pick the story because right now you can just re-roll it over and over there's no it doesn't cost anything and so until you get the one you want and that's kind of what they were doing on the campaign level to get the first biome to be what they wanted it to be they very they specifically wanted to tell wrath story here which is the one he's in now now that doesn't guarantee what the next biome is going to be or the biome after that or the story but um it probably has something to do with his the ramp up his start so yeah this do you know which uh i mean because the spoilers but the the boss has an alternate you know uh way to kill him do you know Mm. in your mind which one you think he's going to go for that's a good question yeah so john points out a good uh, another feature of the game is that the world bosses because we have mini bosses and world bosses the mini bosses they're one that we just saw there the primogenitor there are four of those and on your playthrough of a story you'll get two 
unique ones per biome out of those four. Now, when we add more stories, we'll add more of those, of course. Um, at the end of each biome is a world boss, and the world bosses always have at least two ways to kill them. Two, sometimes it's a different version of the fight. Sometimes it's just a challenge that you have to do uh, within the fight um, to, to trigger it. And so it, it, the question here is, which one are they going for? And are they going for that ending, that fight specifically? Is it easier? Does it give a better item? Uh, maybe they want a certain weapon because if you beat the boss one way, you might get a crafting material for a gun. If you beat them the other way, you might get crafting material for a melee weapon. And depending on your build, depending on what you're trying to do, one may be better than the other for, for those goals. Narut is interesting because it's very desolate, obviously, as you can see, right? And if you're just running through, you're not fighting a lot of stuff. A, a lot of people actually find this zone quite quite challenging on their first first playthrough or two because, you know, enemies can come from a lot of different directions. It's open. You're not looking down a hallway where you know enemies are going to be coming toward you, to be things like that. So, um, but now that I think about it, maybe they picked Narut to get it, quote, <clears throat> quote unquote, out of the way first. You know when because yeah. hmm. because of scaling right like if yep, like, yep. Difficulty, you know you're gonna want that one early yep it could be it could be yeah um and so again that brings up another point so the way the game works is as you level up um every time you go into a new zone uh for the first time the zone will calculate your power level and it'll it'll ramp up so the day the game tries to stay uh at your level of difficulty now you overcome that if you stay on the same difficulty setting survival veteran nightmare apocalypse if you're playing on survivor you're leveling up the world levels up with you as you load into the new zones just used a uh liquid escape to kill himself because mm -hmm. he doesn't want to walk out which is smart he's gonna go back to his last world stone he was looking for the uh, soul sparks is that's that's what gets you into the tower ah yeah yeah, yeah smart he's grabbing smart. And killed himself immediately yep oh. see yeah. um so that's smart um what were we talking about we're talking about i don't remember Oh, the scaling. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you're, you can see the world level at the top by the Eon Vault. The map up at the top there is three. So the world level is currently three. He's probably power level two because it's always one level above you. But if he had leveled up to level, let's say ten, and comes back to this zone within this playthrough, it would still be level three. So he would just mow down everything in this zone. But the reason it keeps leveling up is because we don't want um, to kind of like say oh if you go to this dungeon it will always be this difficulty this dungeon will always be this difficulty right and then we want the, the challenge to to stay with you the whole time because it's meant to be a constantly challenging game however with the random generated layouts you never know where people are going to go so that's kind of our option for that some people are fans some people don't care and some people don't like it um can't win them all Can't please everyone. Can't please everyone. Let's see what we got, though. So it's funny because, like, I mean, from other other uh, speed runs, I've seen like even some of the Remnant One stuff. It's it's not very spammy or, or like you know crazy weird stuff yet. So mm -hmm. it's really just running past everybody. So that's pretty. Oh yeah, pretty funny. definitely. It's I mean, interesting it's really because many points even. So he's here in thirteen hard. minutes, right? That's really yeah. impressive. Yeah. Oh, this is the part that kills me. Just skipping all the cool dialogue. All the di <laughs> yeah, all this narrative narrative uh, designer over here just seems to skip it. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you just want to shoot stuff on the face. Just get true. rid of Telrafa. Not 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 too hard of a fight. I mean, if you if you don't know the fight, obviously you can get hit by some of these big AOEs and the big slaps and some of the gravity attacks, but. Overall, not too bad. Dog's out here doing a little bit of work, putting bleed on him. As you can see, he's got fire, he's got shock and bleed, or overload. Um, the dog is putting bleed on, and then his perfect dodge is putting uh, shock on because of an item he picked up. And then, let's see what he's doing here. He's almost got him down. Oh, yeah, no problem. It's always funny to, to uh, you know, working on balance. That was a nice, nice run there. So working on balance and tuning stuff and having people of all different skill levels 
you know play play the boss internally first of all and then getting that feedback and you'll get feedback that says all oh, this boss is a joke and then you'll get boss that says this boss is, or feedback that'll say this boss is way too hard and so it's it's tricky to parse that information because you're getting it from a small sample set in development right yeah you can sure. you, you you know your testers played the game a million times there's artists that may have played the game a million times maybe there's an engineer that hasn't played quite as much and finally got a chance to play the game. Oh man, I had trouble with that Talratha and somebody else that's played it dozens of times is like, nah, Talratha is too easy. And, you know, yeah. So it is uh, definitely a challenge to get those together. And, and you know, even, even trying to get them close is, you know that there's always going to be a super weak one and a super hard one for different people, right? There's nothing you can do about that. Yeah. Sure. Like there's people like we'll see the boss in here, the cube boss, which is it's it's one of those bosses that some people absolutely love and some people hate because it is so very specific the way that it attacks you and what it it's does. It's a very binary fight where it's, yeah. just, it's one hit, one kill for yep. you. Yep. So it is definitely challenging because you can't like if you've kind of been limping along with a dog or, you know, you yep. know, the heels and potions and all kinds of consumables it doesn't help you there so yeah it's definitely yep. uh very different than pretty much every other fight in the game where you can kind of figure out a strategy around it but yeah there's it's it's really just placement and you know playing your shots yep. more than it is what you got on or even your architect or anything it's very interesting to watch speed runs in general and play these types of games as well because you know people just run by all of the content and that's yeah. very common in any speed run if you don't have to kill it then why would i spend time killing it unless i get something out of it it's totally understandable but when you're testing you're playing the game building the game working on it and and you're playing it quote unquote as it's supposed to be played you're like oh this biome will probably take a couple hours and you're like oh yeah the, he, he got through it in 13 minutes and you're like <laughs> damn well, why is our game too small <laughs> and then you hear people that say oh no i have 100 whatever hours in it i played you know, Narud biome 30 times and I love and you're like, okay, cool. And obviously it took them a while to get to this yeah. point too. So Yeah, for sure. It's definitely this isn't the first playthrough for somebody. <laughs> yeah. Well and people get lost in here too, right? A lot of people yeah. I don't know where to go in the labyrinth. It's so confusing. I'm like, well, it is a labyrinth. Right? <laughs> it's definitely one of those things. That's true. Okay, let's see what he's got in here. Oh look at that. He yeah. just knows respect i like that yeah, impressive <laughs> yep yep okay, what's he going here okay what do we got going on here what, what what's this is tomfoolery <laughs> so he went through he triggered the world stone yeah went back through and now where oh. is he going with this i wonder if this is a whole timed thing okay what's he doing he's going get his bandage out of the way gotcha gotta get good inventory feng shui Right. <laughs> okay, so he's waiting. What do we got? Oh, going for Enigma. Uh, okay. Spoilers, look away if you don't want spoilers, but <laughs> it's one of those guns that uh threads, as they say. Slaps as they say now. Um it's uh really good at AOE. So yeah, this is smart. So he's going to use this to, let's see, warp back. So Enigma is a shotgun, overload gun that is kind of chain lightning, does a ton of AOE, great at just shredding mobs. And the mod on it, the weapon mod on it, leaves little pylons in the enemy. And when they're connected, they deal boosted damage and stuff. So, so what's he going to do? He's going to make some money here. He's going to see if there's any items. He's got a... Okay. He's buying the upgrade materials. Selling all the stuff they don't need, of course. Sorry, I just noticed, too. He's doing it during the, uh, the Halloween event. That was a really cool. Oh, event. that's a good point. That's kind of a weird choice, being, you know, the aberration spawn increase. <laughs> to throw a little bit of a... Maybe he was just practicing, and he just had to... He just did a run during it you know what i mean maybe yeah. it wasn't intentional yeah 
He is going Daredevil Charm, which means he's going to take off all his clothes soon. He's getting hot, <laughs> getting hot on her. There we go. The old classic Daredevil Charm. You can't can't go wrong there. Uh, the way it works is you do extra damage for each piece of armor you are not wearing. However, you take additional damage. And the fact that you don't have armor on is very brutal. So do not <laughs> want to uh, get smoked up here. Leveling up his assault rifle. Okay, assault rifle and Enigma. Pretty good. I like this combo. Wait, where did he pick? I totally missed it when he picked up Enigma. Was that that he just he just crafted it? He that's that okay. was when he was in the lab. He dropped down. Oh, yeah. He picked up the Good rod. Word. Yep. So now, what are we doing here? Let's take a look. Warping back. Okay, you got to do the siege. This is a great idea to have an AOE option in here. Let's see. Enigma is a very funny gun because yeah, see, overloads them. It'll jump to other targets. It'll overload everybody. If they're next to each other, it'll blow them up. But Enigma is a very interesting gun because it is kind of a combo of a couple of guns from other games that we liked with our flavor on it. Uh, and it obviously has to fit within the Remnant universe as well. And we thought, okay, well, we love Chain Lightning. That's always fun. We also love the, the Pylon behavior, the Chaos Driver behavior. Um, and we made this whole gun about it, and then it ended up being... A very very strong I don't want to say divisive but you know divisive or whatever mm -hmm. gun but it's like some people love it because it's so useful and other people dislike it because it's so useful right where it's like mm -hmm. oh I'm so good at this game I would never use Enigma but it's like at that point who cares we don't we don't really care if things are player friendly like when we when it comes down to balance I think our history generally shows that we don't make crazy changes. There are changes that people think are crazy, but when you look at them in the long run, they go, oh, it's it's actually not that bad. That fiend seems fair. And we, we nerfed Enigma, and it's still maybe the best handgun in the game, right? So yeah. it's not like we killed it. We There's no, I mean, it is a PvE game, and we totally understand players' desire to you know, not, not nerf things in a PvE game. We only really make adjustments like that when it's the only option because we want more options to be available. And, you know, of course, people say just buff everything. But the problem is the game has, is balanced around an average. And if something is way out of the average, then we don't want to bring that average, make that average weaker because everything else got stronger. But yeah, it is a quote unquote balancing act. Um, Enigma is a really cool gun. People love it. We don't really see making it. There's no reason to make it bad. Like we want all our guns to be fun, but. When we make those changes, don't don't worry too much because we do play the game. Nice. So he picked up the key. Yeah. Liquid escaped because why walk when you can just liquid escape? True. He did get the checkpoint earlier. So. Yep. Smart. So when you walk by a checkpoint or, you know, touch it in some cases, if you walk by it and you haven't activated it before, it will become your new checkpoint, um, especially the small ones. If you touch one that uh, the big ones will let you warp to other areas the little ones only let you work to like leave the dungeon in town all right so put the key in so here's the boss we were talking about the old cube fan favorite fan favorite fan <laughs> least favorite fan yeah. it's both right it really is it's just like the last boss a lot of people yeah. love it and they'll be like it's one of my favorite bosses ever or one of the best bosses in remnant or whatever and then other people go it's my least favorite boss of all time. I hate it. And that's that's fine. I would I would much rather work on something that some people love and some people hate than everybody just goes, that's eh, okay. Yeah, it's okay. better be memorable in yeah, one right. direction or the other as opposed to forgettable. So this boss is pretty simple in concept, but it, it punishes people that panic. Okay, so you can see you're sh he's shooting these little white dots and they're creating an opening that you can stand under when the cube hits you. The cube will one-shot you. It's straight up one-shot. If you're in a hardcore and it one-shots you, your game is over. So that's one of the reasons, you know, people... Uh, some people don't like this boss. Other people love it because it's on a pattern. It always yeah. follows the pattern. So once you learn it, as you can see here, he's just steamrolling it, right? It's like... Yeah. It, 
like the boss, the, the, the enemies in the air. Oh, he's got one more, one or two more, maybe one. Okay, one. So he got it. So when it's in the air, it'll shoot a big cube at you, which doesn't do a lot of damage. You can just heal through it, but it makes people panic, and then they get in the way of the steamroller, right? And then it's like, oh, so annoying. It's like, well, mm -hmm. you can you can just stand at the beginning of the zone and kind of walk in circles and avoid all damage while you get your bearings. It's just just something you got to learn. All right. So here's another speed run of your all that story you worked on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the keeper. Skip. He's got the biome portal key now. He's going to liquid Hello. escape. Yep. Imagine being in this universe and some guy just did something really cool and defeated a labyrinth sentinel and walked up to you and said, hey, I defeated the sentinel. And then they're like, Cool, here's a key, and then they kill themselves. That's so weird. <laughs> it's like, it, 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 should we make that, I, I, almost like we should make it not kill yourself and instead make it like a, a de, defrag type thing. So you're like going back, it's like recalling your memory. You know what I mean? Instead of yeah. like, it's not, because it doesn't really like, I don't know. Something it is going on. Yeah. So he's got the biome key, so now he can open up the doors to other worlds. And this one, is this one Yesha? I think that's one Yesha, right? Or is it Losum? Can't remember. We only have thousands of hours in it, but it's easier yeah. for, easy for, get. yeah, okay, yeah. Yesha. I think he's got, is, it, is the, uh, the Empress? What's going on here? What's going on here? Oh. It's interesting. Okay, so he went through, got the checkpoint. Okay. Oh, open the both doors. The door. Yeah, because what you can do is you can go in and spawn yeah. that zone. Set. I mean, he's only setting the base area at a low level, but it is cool to get all the doors open. So that's good. I like that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, let's I don't see if go through and play this one or not. Okay, so this is loathsome. So in our DLC that we just released as of this video being out, there's a new story in here. Um, but yeah, this is very... Souls-ish, Bloodborne-ish. It's all kind of stuff, right? And it, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was like intentional, but it just had the aesthetics that kind of blended together that gives off those vibes and people really seem to resonate with that biome and the stories within it. Yeah, it's really cool. It's, it's a really fun zone. I mean, it's, this is, for people who played Kronos, this is your third time to Yesha, so yeah. it's uh a little old hat, but I think we did some some fun stuff in Remnant 2 with the story and, and progressing the story for those folks that, that liked uh, what we did previously. Um, uh, just a really cool world. So it's been fun to flesh it out and give it more. And, you know, it's different each time now. The root are here in full force, so it's different than it was last time. So. Yeah, it is interesting. It's very, it's like, it's like a remnant staple, right? Or a remnant yep. universe staple. You mm -hmm. know that like Yesha is the, the pan and the root and the krell and the whatever, whatever, you know, all the people that are related to that. I wonder if it's like, if we look back in like however many years and there's like a remnant, whatever, three or four or 10 or whatever, it's like, are you going to look back and be like, man, Yesha sure has changed. <laughs> or it's mm -hmm. like, I wonder what would happen. Creepers and, uh, Buses, it's super. Yeah, yeah. Like the Ravager will be on his last leg. He's like, okay, so we fought the Ravager, then we fought Corrupted Ravager, and then we fought Decrepit Ravager. Uh, and then Son of Ravager. Yeah, that's true. He's got a son now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so he's going through this. It looks like he's got Nexus here, which is a world event. I don't know if it's worth killing. I'll probably just walk by it. Let's see. Nexus Siege. Yeah, just going to walk by it. That's cool. Go through here. So you can see the power level of the world is six. Which is the base level for this area. Like there's always minimums, but there's no maximum. So if you are doing stuff like this speed running and you don't keep yourself leveled up, then you will, the world will eventually get noticeably stronger than you. The idea is like you should keep leveling up and using your resource, things like that. 
definitely knows the layouts pretty well. Yeah. Well, you'd think as a speedrunner he would, but even in the case of a procedurally generated overworld. and No, definitely. It's impressive. I mean, there's only so many tiles and only so many orientations mm -hmm. they can be, but still, just yeah, they can all be stitched together so differently. Yeah, okay. that he definitely has a good bearing on, you know, obviously if you look at the map, there's like a fork there, but he knows to go to the right instead of the left. Ooh. So that is due to that's due to the Halloween event that yeah. he's doing this thing in. And normally, well, previous to that event, aberrations would not spawn in the overworld open world unless they were part of a tile. So it would, they were all static where they would spawn. You'd always get, you know, this aberration here and that aberration here. But now after the during the event, which is playing this in, they can spawn on like high intensity tiles at a at a hundred percent chance. So that was a high intensity tile. Therefore, he got a random aberration. Now, after the event, which is currently now that you know in in in, in real time, people are playing post event. Um, the the rate is lower. The spawn rate is lower. But we have bumped it up a little bit uh, since the DLC has come out uh, because some people have really. We, we, we found that people actually enjoyed having those aberrations spawn in the world. Yeah, it's um, it's it, it's not a minor thing. Just yeah. But at the same time, it's like, oh, it's just some new character spawn. I mean, get out a ton of them and they yep. have like all kinds of yep. cool mutators. Yep. But it just the just the reaction that people had to it was really surprisingly positive. So that was really cool yep. um, for something. It's like it's not like we added like Here's like 30 new levels. It's like, oh, well, here's a chance a random dude's gonna show up and punch in yep. the face. That's cool. People are like, give me more. Yep. So that was that was really awesome to see that. And we adjusted, we changed our delivery method of mutators. So mutators are are things that you can put on your gun to change the behavior of the gun. Like it does bleeding damage on crits, or it does, you know, reloads really fast after a kill, things like that. That you just can modify your guns up with. And in the base game, and even now, uh, when you kill a statically placed uh, aberration, they will drop a very specific mutator. So you just have to kill them once to get it. Now, you may want to kill them again to get, you know, the, some, some crafting materials and stuff. But in this event, when they spawn out in the world, they uh, pull from a pool of mutators. So you want, so it's, you know, you don't have to kill a specific one. So this boss is interesting because it punishes you for looking at him. You can see his madness meter. Uh, mm -hmm. filling up there so it's looking at him and now he'll go mad and that can really mess with his uh, mess with his HUD and make him take more damage and stuff like this the guy's not too hard especially on Survivor This is, it's one of those fights that it's funny because in Remnant 1 a lot of player feedback was hey there's too many ads and we, we, we made a concerted effort to really make sure that the ads had reasons to be in certain fights this fight is very specifically all ads, right? Like if you look at this one, this one is the opposite. This one is like, okay, there is gonna be one. It's just like, hey, this is this eye, and then he spawns ads, and then you re brings them back to life, and then you you kill him, and he brings them back to life. But that is his theme, so at least it's thematic. Yeah, that was our goal. It's really cool. Just a weird enemy. It is really cool. It's just yeah. not like it's a, it's a big dude. It's like no, it's got a crazy floating head. You look yeah. at it too long, you get the madness, it's summoning guys. It's a, yeah, it's a fun one. So, so yeah, far, pretty cool. impressive. What were you saying? Sorry. I was going to say, is I, 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 I mean, I'm a, I'm a Remnant fan, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I, I think the bosses in this game are even just more out there than the first one. I think really the all, all the all the combat stuff got, you know, I, I mean, everything in the game really got refined, but I think it, the bosses are a lot more uh, varied, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. So you they just feel different. So I, I think it's uh, kudos to the combat team on that one. Cause oh, yeah, they did an awesome job. Fun. Just, and obviously all the weapons and stuff. So kudos to the rewards team, too. So well, it's interesting. Everyone. It's interesting uh, because a lot of feedback, of course, was gained after the first during and after the first game right and people are like ah, oh, there's a lot of ads here and a lot of ads here um it is a challenge to make shooter bosses that don't have ads and it's not specifically yeah. just because of the ammo but that is a reason for because you need something to drop ammo and there are many ways to do that don't get me wrong you could find chests you could break fences you could whatever that's fine but you have to remember that you're also 10, 15, 20, 25 meters 
from the target. And most of our enemies in the game are melee, right? And so you have a huge, huge advantage when you have guns and things that slow them and all of that. You can set them on fire and things like that. It's it's a bit different. It's quite a bit different than a traditional Souls game. I know I said we're Souls with guns as the easy explanation. But when you play Magic and Souls or Elden Ring or anything like that, it it definitely makes the gun easier or the game easier. And so in a game with guns, that's like having magic all the time, right? In a way. So they are often meant to be additional distractions, right? Uh, and, and in some cases, you need those. Now, there are other ways to do that. As you see with the cube boss, the cube boss doesn't really have ads. I mean, yes, it has a lot of rolling pieces, but it's not like they're spawning in extra guys. It's very much on a pattern. There's, you can put objectives in boss fights where, hey, if you don't stand here, you're going to die. Or if you don't carry this thing and deliver it to the... There's a lot of ways to do that. And I think the combat team for Remnant 2 really stepped that up. And there's some cases with ads. There are cases with no ads. There's some with... Medium amount. Oh, oh, I like that. Nice. That's a that's a nice little skip there. Yeah. Didn't have to open the door. I like. That's what I've been waiting to see. I'm like, where are all these super cool skips? So far, he's just playing it just really clean and nice. Got to get some of those skips. I like that. But yeah, yeah. combat team did a good job on the bosses and uh, overall, I think people enjoyed them and a lot of people have their favorites and their least favorites and and they actually match up. A lot of people's match up, except for the, the ones like Cube and the final boss, which, like I said, some people absolutely adore and some people just don't like it all. That's can't can't win those. <laughs> that was a nice little skip there. So where's he going now? So now, OK, he skipped to low some interesting. What's this? Oh, is it because the, the level's lower? So he's, he's kind of like cleaning up as much as yep. he can yep. to the bosses so it doesn't bump the level. Yeah, yeah because sense. you're right, because if he goes into the next area, and his let's say his world or his his player level is seven the next area will be eight and yeah. so he already has spawned this one which is really cool because this is a larger overworld right so this whole area is going to be a little bit weaker um well it's going to be whatever he spawned it at but if he keeps leveling up and then the moment he goes through a um feather door then those guys will spawn up but i don't think he's very high level either so it depends if he ends up hitting the minimum levels for certain areas. Good old Enigma. Yeah, I thought he, he, um, he only leveled up his weapons once. Okay. Didn't he? And then, have have you there. seen his archetype go up much? I haven't even seen the screen. We should make a ring or a trinket that makes it so you get no EXP for the people that want to do level one runs. It's like, hey, you're permanently level one. Mm, that is cool. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's funny because... We talk about this all the time when we're making new trinkets and guns and anything is making the first 10 or 15 or 20 trinkets is very easy. You go, hey, what, what do we want on these trinkets? Let's add some range damage or let's add some crit. And let's make it, you know, bleed. Let's make you move faster. That's easy. But then when you have to make 20 more, it's a little harder because you don't want as, you don't want to make dupes, right? So there's currently uh, before the DLC, which just released, Again, is the time of this video. Uh, there are 144 rings alone and over 60 necks. And so making a whole swath of new trinkets is very challenging when you already have 200. And then so you move into the next DLC and more content. You're like, well, let's make another batch of rings. And you're like, okay, well, now we have over 200. You know what I mean? So it just mm -hmm. gets harder and harder and harder. So having a few of those kind of fun gimmick rings some people just really enjoy it's like a no exp ring yeah or a ring that yeah. sets you to level five or it says enables all five enables all five of your skill or three of your skills but you can't level up hmm i have to call out this is our animation director uh vocab <laughs> this is it, it, this is his mocap so <laughs> there's a video of him that. somewhere doing this right yeah there's gotta be somewhere That's so funny. It is. I, though I don't think he actually was juggling anything. He was he was faking it. So he's just faking it. <laughs> it's a phony. <laughs> Shout outs to Chris. Mm -hmm. This is a very funny area because people I we saw numerous times people would walk up, talk to this guy, 
or or look at him and he would start dancing and they're like all right well whatever and they'd walk away and they wouldn't get the feather and it's like yeah. that is the key you gotta you know and it, it is one of those things where you can miss stuff in this game you can not know which way to go i think if you take your time and you pay attention overall i think most people will be successful but uh there are some cases where people get stuck and they're not sure what to do i mean that's required right I'm, you have to figure that one out right because that's the only way forward is to get the uh the pen mm -hmm. or, or my think of something else Here. There's some streets, streets yep. below South, or as they call it, London. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was in the Fay side, which is very regal and you know beautiful and pristine and all these things. And then the Dran is kind of like the slums of this area, right? Where it's like it's a different, I guess, a different race of people, right? Because they're not the same race people that no, are split, right? Two totally different different race. Worlds. Yeah, yeah, different world. Yeah. So, yeah. and I guess in the story, you could probably touch on this more, isn't it? That the Fey are kind of feeding on the energy of the Dran mm -hmm. in some way. Yeah. Like basically it was two different worlds. And then when the, uh, the one true King was stabbed, um, who was the guardian of the world, um, he, it basically caused these two worlds to merge. Cause it was something that shouldn't have happened. And he was like put into like a dreamless sleep and these two worlds merged and it's, it's the Dran, which was like a, uh, early industrial revolution, which is what we're seeing here mm -hmm. during the world. Um, and they kind of became these like mindless drones. And then uh, the Fae, who were like these uh, awful fairy people, basically, um, saw these drain and they're like, hey, um, we can take advantage of them. And, and uh, basically they just feed on their like psychic energies. Um, you know, their magic and stuff. So, yep, yep. Um, so they're basically like psychic vampires. Um, on these, these poor, unsuspecting, um, uh, I guess, like drone, drone-like people, yeah, um, who are also very angry at anybody who's not drained. That's why they're all trying to attack. That me. is true. I mean, I will say everybody in this game is angry at anybody that's not their, their, their. I guess their faction or whatever, right? It's mm -hmm. like, and then Political you'll run into some friendly really. ones. What's that? <laughs> political commentary really on the state of the world yeah it's pretty funny it's like i can't we get along like we could just go on adventures in different worlds that's what remnant 3 will be it'll be like nobody will be mad at you and it's just a puzzle game yeah like, cool everybody works together so there's an elite he's gonna skip that elite i like that he killed some pigs though along the way so that was good kind of messed up why do you got to pick on the pigs probably because they run <laughs> Messed up, man. Like, never mind any of these guys. Yeah. Take out these poor pigs. <laughs> Messed up. Messed up. Okay, so he's in Burning City tile set now. So he's headed to uh, Gwent Gwendolyn. I forgot how her name is. Is it Gwendolyn? Yeah, Gwendolyn. Yeah. So that's a good boss to get because that that's... I, I guess generally accepted as one of the easier bosses in the game. Yeah. Um, and that's, and we're okay with having some easy ones and some more challenging ones. It's fine. We don't want all of them to be pain. Right. But we do yeah. want them to have some, some kind of mechanic or some kind of challenge. That's actually one that does have ads to annoy you. Okay, going through here. This is tricky because there's that yeah, elite so cast some magic. It's bases. Yep. They're yep. swinging. <laughs> Yep. Did a little damage along the way, but avoid most of it. He knows exactly where he's going. Okay, so it's almost there. Pick up a... Uh... So speedrun, got to get that one forged iron. You never know. You yeah, never know. know. Yeah, could have been five forged iron. Yeah, I wonder. I know it, it can... It's it's from a, a spawn table, so it could be... a you know, a certain amount or whatever. I wonder if like you pick one up and you get two and you're like, oh, it was a waste of time. Mm -hmm. Oop. Okay, set that on fire, dangerous. So when you shoot those immolators, they ignite. Uh, they take actually more damage from melee, 35% more damage from melee. So if they're, they're not on fire, you might want to hit them with a, a chunky melee hit. So what's he doing here? Is he gonna, so he's, the boss has been spawned, right? Because all, right. basically all of the bosses in the game are now in the same zone. You don't zone over anymore like Remnant 1. So therefore they don't level up when you go in. So now 
he came into this area at I think seven, six or seven, which means the boss is going to stay at that level. So if he levels up, then he'll be stronger than the boss's power level. So he's getting rid of everything. Yeah, probably going to run and go get a... Yeah, what's he going to buy from old... Uh... Oh, ammo boxes. Are... Okay. That's definitely something you're going to need when you're lower powered, right? You don't yeah. have all of your skills and... Plus, definitely... you're not going to run much. You're not getting many drops. True. You're running against everybody. You're just... Very true. Okay. He's at eight? Seven? He's at seven? That's not bad. Hmm. So you're doing 70% more damage, 10% per level up. Yeah, and this... That's with uh, Enigma, though. Oh, yeah. Did he level it up at all? No. Yeah. Oh. Okay, well, interesting. He's using it as that kind of like a overload applicator. And so, yeah, see the boss is level 7. You can tell by the world level. And his yeah. gun is now level 7, so he's equal level. But he's also wearing the um, Daredevil's Charm, which gives him an enhanced damage buff because he's not wearing armor. So just don't get hit. You'll be all right. So, oh, oh, he's not taking that much damage. I mean, it is survivor difficulty. And contrary to popular belief, survivor is not meant to be easy. Like the game is challenging, right? Even on survivor, we don't consider it our easy, but it is the easiest, if that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? obviously. Um, but it's 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 never like you don't pick it to be like oh I'm just gonna yeah, it's not well, story I, mode yeah I was just gonna say you don't pick it to just speed run through the game and I'm like okay that's literally what <laughs> maybe, maybe that's the, but you know what I mean right all right let's yeah. what do you get here got a, that's, got a that's a good challenge yep yeah exactly I mean especially when it's your first time playing the game there's you got to learn the mechanics there's just a lot going on so. It, it it even internally people that have worked on the game have said to us oh man it's, it's, it's the game is really challenging and they play on survivor or they may play on veteran right and then there's some of us that'll play on nightmare right off the bat and we'll be like i mean it's challenging i guess but again it's it's totally different when you work on every archetype every gun every ring you know what i mean and you know what goes together you know mm -hmm. every skill every perk you fought all the enemies it's like okay well So here's a nice little puzzle. The game is filled with puzzles. Some of them prevent your progress. Yeah. So you have to figure out what to do. This is just a, you know, where did it go type game. So we're looking for the twins. As you might have seen, it was kind of obscured. There was a devil head too. And that, of course, would has relevance to something else as well. Don't mess this up. Well, nice, nice. Okay. So the reason they had to pick that is because they're looking for the other half of the mural. And so at the beginning of their trip in Losum, they, there's a, there's a gimme just right off the bat. You walk in and pick it up. This is the second piece. You need two pieces to deal with uh, the boss. It'll be interesting to see what you, boss he picks as i mentioned before there are two ways to kill each boss sometimes it's a different fight sometimes it's just a different requirement in the fight this one has two different bosses they do fight similarly but they have different themes one is more melee themed one is more range themed i always enjoy seeing what you guys come up with with names for the zones because i didn't know beatific was a word Yes. I was like, is that a typo? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, he's going the, in. What's the other mini boss? What's that? I told you, did he just fly past, the, like he did uh, the unburned. Who was the first mini boss? That what, you only have to do one mini boss. And in, in, generally speaking, unless it's like Swamp in Remnant 1 or some some weird outline, okay. you only have, there's only one mandatory mini boss. Usually. Uh, usually. Okay. So I always just go through and just. Like both of them. Yeah, me know. too. Yeah, I want that loot. Oh, okay. he's going straight for Phelan. He didn't want to even bother with going to Phelan. So. Yep. So he's got Phelan, and Phelan is the melee one, right? Or is or wait, is, I always forget because the names are so similar. Because there's some ranged attacks. Okay. Oh yeah, definitely ranged attacks there. Doing pretty good though. This damage is really nice. Okay. 
So you gotta watch out for these swords. Pretty epic. So he's just keeping overload on him, it looks like. Yeah, see, so when he comes out, he's overloaded. That's smart. Mm -hmm. Even though it was resisted, and you could get a little bit of damage there. Um, tuning him up. Not too bad. He's going in invincible phase. He's going to go super cyan a little bit. Like I'll pick up this ammo. Okay. Keeping an eye out for the swords. I like it. All right. See if you can get him down before he flies off again. Ooh, nice rush. Very anime. Got him. Nice job. Nice. So we got a labyrinth segment. You got to beat each world boss of the main three biomes to get a lab segment. So you can put them together and uh, open the final door. Not similar to the Triforce at all. Mm -mm. Nope. It's just rule of three. That's how the world works. Yeah. Everything sure. in rules of three. Okay, nice. So now he's warping over right to the world boss of this one. That's very interesting how they yeah. did this. Very huh. cool. Yeah, because it's nine now, but still it's yep. Totally yep. Would have been. yep, exactly. He didn't level it up, so he spawned it without... He spawned it and then left and then kept the world that level. Because it won't go up again. It locks it until you roll it completely new again. Um, so this should be a pretty easy fight. Um... You know, the trick for this fight is reduce the Corruptor's health, but the Corruptor reduces its own health every time it reses the uh, Many Faces. Yeah. And for Kronos fans, Many Faces was a boss in that game. Yeah, he's right. the Guardian of the Pan World. In the, Guardian uh, of the Pan World, yeah. Easy game. Sure. Ooh, look at this. Smart. I like it. Oh, nice. Like, why why use your... Why take time to drink when you can just... Oh, okay. <laughs> The dog is like, bro. <laughs> this dog Just is so out. confused. Stressing that dog out. He's got a lot of trade points. I wonder what he's going to put him in. I wonder if he's waiting for a certain trait, right? Like, is he yeah. saving up or is he just not want to waste time? Yeah. No, it looks like he's 20 seconds ahead of this or behind, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you say it. So. Yeah. A little bit behind. He'll, he'll make it. Oh, so oh, this part is quicker. Um, pro tip while you're adding trait points you can on pc you can hold shift and click and it'll fill the whole trait Ooh. instead of one yeah. at a time but it is fun to just put one at a time yeah. okay root earth okay bigger bigger i like that you endurance yep i like that doing doing some kind of movement so you can go into your menu pretty standard speed run trick i like it so, so, the final world, which if you're playing in, in uh, adventure mode, is not available that way because it's part of the campaign. So. True, same as lab, right? So both mm -hmm. the lab and the... Yeah, because they're not really like technically full worlds with full stories. They're just part of the campaign. Yep. And you, I believe, I'm trying to remember, I could be mistaken, but I believe you can get everything in those biomes in one play and the other ones you can't. I'm trying to think of it. I, I, there's probably an example. Saying he's malice, he's going for that. Community ring. No. Or Zania, sorry. Don't want her to watch Gotta this and go, you mispronounced it. <laughs> Gotta get it. Uh, one of the best rings in the game for damage. If you like damage, it's the way to go. It increases weak spot damage. Who doesn't like damage? What's that? Who doesn't like damage? I mean, who doesn't like damage? I mean, I say jokingly, nobody ever healed a boss to death, but that's not true because you could use heals in certain games that kill zombies and that's enemies. True. And even in Elden Ring, there's I use your Estus and it hurts hurts guys, which is cool. But uh, generally yeah. speaking, doing pretty good so pretty far. Good, He's yeah. not taking too much damage. Hasn't really needed his relics much. Yeah. Funny though, he, uh, I mean, he only ran to that one um, aberration. That, that during the That's game. true. That is true. And so did he, I didn't see, did he put points in Siphoner or is he just using a regen potion? I'm trying to look at the bottom there. Because he's got a, a slow, constant regen going on, but I don't think he got Siphoner because that's Narud, right? Yeah, the, he doesn't have Siphoner. I don't think. But yeah, he's got a constant regen going there. 
which is smart, especially when you're not leveling up your relics, right? You're not getting extra charges. You have to find simulacrum in the world, and then mm. you have to use said simulacrum to uh, go to Wally, which is a little bit of a walk even within Ward 13, so. True. Yeah, so he's got, he's got the, oh, wait a minute, is he? So, he, he's got the pylons from the, from the weapon in there. He actually would have done more damage if there was one pylon on the ground and the rest were in the body, I believe. Because the way it's set is as long as you tether to something that is not the same target, it'll get a damage boost. So he put a bunch mm -hmm. of pylons in the chest and they all tick and they all do damage. But if you put one more on the floor, I think he could have sped that up. So if you're watching this, <laughs> try that next cool. time. Oh, yeah, he doesn't really use it that much though. Obviously it's more for his like ad clear and just to just to pop some of the scrubs. But uh, it's it's a very strong weapon when you abuse its mechanics. Well, it's strong regardless. <laughs> so that was a quick siege, mandatory, had to get through that. Moving up in here, and he should be fighting the... Well, there's going to be another open area, right? But let's see who's going to Yeah, go through here. I remember seeing this in development before it had the geometry and the textures and all that it was just a gray box and i'm like i don't see it you know what i mean i'm like i don't know what this is supposed to be they'd be like oh there's a ship over here in the background and you're walking on roots and I'm like i don't know what this is it just looks like a big gray box but then yeah. the first time i saw it i was like okay this is awesome yeah yeah it's really cool it's pretty wild looking all right good old cancer so one two three let's see put one on the ground put one on the ground do it Nope. See, if you put one on the ground, it would have done more damage. Hmm. I invalidate the speed run. Yeah. Doesn't count. All right, Doesn't well, count. Coming up next, uh, tragic. What will happen is somebody will comment in the video. They'll be like, well, actually, there's a trick or a bug or a thing that makes it do even more. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I haven't seen anything crazy though. There haven't been, and I and I don't mean that like as a bad thing. I just mean there hasn't been too many crazy skips, right? Like if no, he had done no. this months and months ago, you could have used the engineer skip to get through doors and a bunch of other stuff. This is a this is just a clean. Well, I guess is this a no skip run? Is it considered a no skip run? Because that could so. be why. That could very yeah. much be why. Um, but then again, he did the thing near the matriarchs insignia, which. That's kind of a skip. Although yeah. it is a vault, so it's not, I wouldn't call it a cheat. So yeah. we'll allow it. We'll allow it. Yeah, I mean, it's really clean and just really yep. efficient yep. bosses. So. Yep. Well, when you're playing with Daredevil's Charm, you can't afford to take too much damage, right? Yeah. But he is using consumables. I love seeing people using concoctions and consumables. We make all of these things and then. It's funny, I want to say nobody uses it and it's frustrating, but then I remember I played Elden Ring for 300 hours and I rarely ever use the consumable. So, and there's like a million in that game. You know what I mean? Or I play. Yeah. Uh, you just gotta save them. You never know when you're gonna need them. That's the whole thing, right? Well, well, like, well I'm really gonna need this later. And then you credits roll and you're like, oh, I guess yeah. I'll never use them. That happened to me in Resident Evil 4, the original, before yeah. the remake, where I got the rocket launcher and I'm like, oh, I can one shot any boss. Well, I'll save this. And then I mm -hmm. beat the game and I'm like, well, I guess I never needed this. <laughs> but yeah it it is fun to see people utilize all of these extra things right and i but i think when you're min maxing that's of course what you're gonna do yeah watch out for that guy he's gotta go fight venom now venom is the big brother of that elite knight that we just saw and uh it's interesting because as you can see the world level now is 13. And I think he's still only yeah. seven or eight. So he's he's got to play smart. Still survival, difficulty survivor. But, you know, he's got a siege first. But, um, yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see. A few scrubs here. Probably just run by these guys. See what we got to do is make speedrunner underwear. Um. <laughs> just make a speedo. <laughs> it's like let you run faster when you have no other clothes on. <laughs> We'd have to see if Dave will say, hey, Dave, can we do a, it's a speedo and it's speed run gear? And you're just super slick. Remember, those those suits were banned in the Olympics because they're oh, yeah. too fast. They're just too fast. <laughs> we'll do it when we when we add, you know, 
full swimming to Remnant <laughs> 7. <laughs> what do you want to swim? You can shoot where some. <laughs> well, maybe you have gone to a different world, so you get to put that little Metal Gear Solid like face mask so you can just breathe on underwater, and then we'll have like gravity boots so you can walk on the floor. It'd be a whole different game. That's true. So this is an interesting encounter because you kill all the scrubs, not that big of a deal, but then you get the elite, which is from the tutorial. You get two of them and they can bowl you over. So you gotta be really careful about that. I mean, I'm sure he's gonna navigate it pretty well. There's only like eight minutes left in this playthrough. So not only is he gonna beat that quick, he's gonna beat the last boss pretty quick. So there, there's one of them. There should be a second one, right? Yep, got bowled over. And it's not that big of a deal by itself, but if you get bowled over and then the other guy comes and gets you or there's some scrubs, you haven't cleared. Maybe there only is one on Survivor? Ooh. Ooh. Dog and he. Ooh. Is there only one on normal? Maybe I... Maybe I... Nope. So he hasn't... There it is. Okay, yeah, there is two. So you just split them very, uh, very efficiently. That's smart. So, for people don't, don't, that don't know the archetype or class that he's playing is the handler, and the handler, of course, has the dog, as you've seen throughout the video, and its prime is called bonded, and that means when you go down, you get knocked down, the dog will actually revive you. He's got a cooldown on it, uh, nicely played there. Wayfair, best trade in the game, no memes. Uh, hmm. Maybe some memes, maybe all the memes, but... Uh, it's it's very handy, especially for players that are still learning, right? You all, we also have Challenger who has the ability to get up, and it's on a 10-minute cooldown, but every time you touch a World Stone, it resets, so it's as fast as you want it to be. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a really... This this is a good class slash archetype for speedrunning because of swiftness, their base trait that they get automatically levels up with them, and of course, you get a little free life. So here's Venom. Shoot one to the ground. Come on. Do it. Maybe you just miss one and it'll do more damage. <laughs> okay. Good damage, though, regardless. So, some players may notice, and we've, we've heard some comments, too, that you play the biomes and some people feel the root is a little bit harder than most. Maybe, you know, because of enemies going all over the place. That's the space zone. Um enemies from all different directions and things like that but generally speaking they're not too crazy but then when you complete all three biomes and you come to earth you're like okay the bosses in earth are hard and it is true because it's kind of like it's the end game right where it's yep. like well this is where it gets super serious i nice mean if you were speed running you'd be pretty decked out at this point Oh yeah, and, and and here's the thing, you'd be, well, he's, he's level 13, so again, he's under leveled, but he's got a good set of gear and stuff. So you might come in here at level 12, 13, and, which would make the boss 13 or 14 respectively. So not that much different, but knowing the boss's pattern, knowing when to dot, you know, standard stuff, it definitely makes it look easier than it is. A lot of people got stuck on Cancer, Venom, and the final boss. They are uh, more demanding, let's say. Mm -hmm. Nicely played. All right, here we go. He's got six minutes yep. to finish. This is probably, maybe not probably, I think this is the most visually impressive and mechanically impressive boss in Remnant Universe. I mean, some people like Ixalis or uh, Cessnia, Ses is that her name? From Swamp? Oh, yeah. Uh, the Swamp Queen, yeah. Yeah, the sw yeah. they like the Swamp Bosses from DLC. Uh, well, from base game is Ixalis, which is the two butterflies, basically, two moths, and then Cessna is from the the DLC. But this one is, this one goes all out. So let's see what we got. It's got that Zania's Malice putting in work for the weak spot damage. Look, it's okay. We're fifth down pretty quick. A lot of really good tells on this boss. A lot of good sound cues. Okay, blow these up so they don't come at you. You just have to blow up one. Nice. You blow up one and it'll kill the pair. Tearing it up. Melting down. Yeah, no problem. It's got a little burn going on. Nothing major. 
but all, every every bit of damage helps. All right, phase two. So now he's in the Lawnmower Man sequel. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see what happens here. A lot of a lot of stuff is going on. When you get it down a little bit lower, it gets even wilder. All this work with the dog, and now the dog doesn't get to participate quite as much. I guess he's just keeping his eye out for you. Like, don't he's just ready to heal you if you need it. That's true, and and give you like maybe a defensive buff or a speed speed buff. I think he only has he's 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 not even level five, right? On his archetype, so I don't know. I, I, last last day he popped up, I thought it was like one shot. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, not getting a lot of exp. <laughs> so. This boss is obviously glitching out intentionally. It's mm -hmm. not bugged. It, it it just looks like this. And now he's going between his two phases, which is one of those what the heck moments. So he's like doing these swings and he's switching between the modes and the attacks are carrying over between the modes. You got to remember what the attack is when you get warped. See, so that's what he was doing before he got here. Really cool. He's doing really good. It's definitely a harder phase. Yeah, definitely. A lot of stuff. Really going. be watching. Yep. Yep. This one was uh, clearly designed for the virtual boy. <laughs> All, that <red. laughs> All that red, baby. We should have added blue, and then you could wear the old timey <laughs> glasses, and it's like super three D. <laughs> super clean though. hasn't hasn't really made any mistakes. Okay, dude. You're not supposed to make mistakes when I say. Yeah, I mean, just, you know. Commentator's curse. Ooh. Okay, got to blow these up because you do not want to get smoked. This is why you play Enigma because, oh, he got caught in a reload. But don't worry, Enigma's on the scene. Switch <laughs> it over after reload. Oh. Ooh, get him, dog. Man, that's like 20 seconds off your time by dying here and then getting hit earlier. We're going to need to see the sequel. <laughs> see if he gets warped through or if he's going to kill it. No, he's got it. He's got it. He's got it. Yeah. He's got it. About to. Nice. Nice. All right. So now he's got to skip the cutscene, survive. Or don't. Or don't. You can get overwhelmed here and it'll still end. Nice. That was, that was pretty impressive. Yeah. Uh, a lot of cool techniques that I didn't know about yeah. and nothing, nothing I look at and go, oh, we got to fix that or that's a, you know, outright offensive to the to the gameplay. You know what I mean? Like sometimes you'll see some stuff and go, OK, well, maybe we don't want that in there. But overall, that was just a clean. Yeah. Clean run. Very um, impressive. Um, but yeah, we, you know, definitely appreciate people coming by and watching this. Uh, we've just released our DLC, The Awakened King, which adds a new story to Loathsome, you get to see what uh, what the Awakened King is up to and how he's going to deal with all the people that tried to usurp him and, and all that stuff. It's really cool. A lot of new items, trinkets, guns, new archetype, of course, and just new adventures in general. Um, Remnant 2 is on Steam. It's on Xbox, what, S and X? X and S. PS5, yep. And Epic. Yeah, and Epic. Yeah, so yeah. check it out. Um, and of course, always swing by our Discord and, and our Reddit and let us know what you think because we're always out here listening and we're always looking to make new awesome content for you. Appreciate you stopping by. Yeah, thanks everybody. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye.